Make your way through the winding mountain roads of the Peloponnese to reach the peaceful little village of Tsintsina. Located in the heart of the Peloponnese region in southwestern Greece, about two hours from Kalamata, you'll find this little village that is packed with history, stunning hikes, and the best meal I've ever eaten. But we'll get to that. First, let's explore the village's most popular site, the Chapel of St. John the Baptist. Good morning. We have spent two hours taking this little bus here from Kalamata to Tsitsina. This little village, about 10 years ago, only had three residents. <laughs> but uh, we're starting with a little bit of a hike, about a half an hour up into the mountains, get some amazing views, and then we'll head into Tsitsina and uh, explore, eat some lunch, I hope, something delicious. But look at it. We left the beach and we are well and truly in the mountains. There's fir trees everywhere. It's sunny, finally seen the sky, <laughs> the blue skies. Windy road though. <laughs> you're self-driving, take your time and uh, use Google Maps because most of the road signs are in, just in Greek. I didn't see any written with like the, the Roman alphabet. So you'll want, uh, you'll want a proper navigation system on board to get you here but it's worth it. Tintsina sits on top of mountain springs, and the water is what brought so many people to live and work here in the last century. There are taps like this all over the area where you can fill up your bottle and enjoy cold spring water, completely free. It's one kilometer from the road to the monastery. It's a little bit steep, a little bit rocky, so you want sturdy shoes, but. It's not so hard, <laughs> and uh, it's really beautiful. I mean, look at these views. We're not even at the top yet. Plenty of places to stop. Plenty of shade, actually, because it's through the forest. Just watch where you're going. It's rocky. Once we got to the top, we were able to go inside the chapel, where monks used to sleep and where there are incredibly old paintings. From inside the chapel, the views over the village and the surrounding mountains are incredible. Then we headed to a neighboring village to have lunch at this family-run taverna. This village has two residents, and it's the two people who run the restaurant, the husband and wife, who made all that incredible food. It's one of the best meals I've ever had in any of the trips that I've had here in Greece, but especially on this trip to, the, to this region uh, in the last couple of days. I am in awe, highly recommend it. If you're gonna do a sort of road trip around the Peloponnese, I will pin the destination of all the different places that I've been in this video in the description uh, so that you can plot your own road trip. You guys, this is Greece. Can you believe it? It's not just the islands, not just Athens and the ruins. Like there is so much history here, so much hospitality. And this room is so beautiful. <sighs> Obviously I'm having a great time. We're gonna have a little rest uh, before we go out and eat again. <laughs> so it's my kind of trip. While in Cincina, I stayed at this stunning guest house, Pritaneo. Just on the edge of Cincina, this place feels like it's on the edge of the world. The rooms were cozy and the balcony views were breathtaking. It helps that I slept like a baby here. After resting, and I'll be honest, editing last week's video, I met back up with the group and we headed for what I was unaware at the time would be one of the most memorable meals of my adult life. This is Ifienia, and this is her restaurant, Taverna Kukunari. She doesn't live in Cincina, but she spent a lot of time here as a child, learning these recipes from her grandmother. She opened up this tavern to share them with her family and friends, and with the visitors to this village who want a taste of the Peloponnese. Dish after dish appeared at our table, and stories of where the recipes came from followed. As the final plate of stewed beef hit the table, Ifienia sat down with us and asked us about ourselves. 
She wanted to hear our stories at her table too. It was a truly wonderful evening of food and laughter and creating memories with strangers from around the world. Good morning, how beautiful is this? The birds, it's the only sound. It's so beautiful here. I think I might have time to go have breakfast and then quickly head into the town for one last little explore. The breakfast buffet at Pritaneo was packed with all types of sweet and savory breakfast options and nice strong coffee. I had just enough time to dash back into town to explore a little bit more. There's the small church in the center of town and the old school where children used to be able to come when the town had more residents. Now it sits abandoned, waiting for some other use or more likely some other money. It's Saturday today, so there are a few people in the village and uh, a few cars around, but it's nine o'clock in the morning and it is just me and the birds and a few cats I saw. The meal that we had at that restaurant last night, first of all, it was a feast. It was incredible. It was one of the best meals that I've ever eaten. Definitely in Greece, <laughs> well worth, it's the sort of restaurant that you, you cross the world for because the food is amazing, the, the stories behind the food are so beautiful and the people who are making the food are so passionate about the recipes that have come from their grandparents, from their parents' grandparents. <laughs> it's just, it was such a beautiful experience to sit at that huge table and be able to hear her tell us where each of these dishes came from, what it is. The, everything is locally sourced. And I was just like emotional in the end, you guys. The food was incredible. She told us a little bit about the village here, which she sort of grew up in as a kid uh, and now, probably between October and uh, March. It has zero permanent residents. No one lives here full time anymore. People come on the weekends uh, and then in the summertime, most people come here who own the, pr the properties and it becomes a town of a thousand people, which is pretty, pretty, like that's a lot of people. <laughs> so I'm, oh, gosh, I, I'm, I feel so, grateful to have had the experience of coming here and seeing this town, eating the meal with these people, hearing their story. Uh, during the summertime, you can come to this town and everything will be open. But if you do want to come here in the shoulder season, uh, like I have here in May, then you'll want to plan to come to the village on the weekends. The, ta the tavern is open every weekend still throughout the year. So you can have this incredible meal without the, the huge crowds. You can experience this sort of quiet, peacefulness. I had the best sleep I've ever had last night. Well, that's it for Tsitsina. What an incredible place. I hope you guys enjoyed exploring this little truly hidden gem here in Greece in the mountains of the Peloponnese. I'm rushing because I'm, as always, late for the bus. <laughs> We're off to another village here, another town, another hidden gem. So hopefully the title of this video isn't too misleading because this whole region is, but this town in particular was so special. I'm excited to continue on in this journey. Be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss all the videos in this series. I'm out of breath. We're in the mountains. <laughs> it's so beautiful here. Anyway, thanks as always for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.